All right, next up on the Kevin Bond build, we're going to go ahead and make a flame maple telly neck with a strut headstock, telly heel with a strut headstock. I've got the same piece of wood that I use for the flame maple top. We're going to make a neck out of it. That way we get the stain to sit perfectly. I've already laid this out once and I did it wrong, so I'm going to relay it out again. And since he wants a strut headstock, I did the center line in the board and that took this piece off so what I had to do is move it down. And so I'll show you how I lay this out. I've got the nut line drawn already from an approximation and then I drilled on each side here so I could keep this together when I need to re-glue this back up. And so this will be the center line. That's the center line and the nut right there. We'll do that here as well. Just make sure it's drawn as dark as it can be. This is the measure twice, cut once. Glad I laid this out before I decided to do something. So that's the headstock. Right on the nut. It's perfect. So we'll draw this out. So that's the neck. The fretboard we're all set to cut with the nut on uh, one of my templates. He wants the truss rod to be adjustable on the top so we've got a dual action truss rod that we're going to slot coming back up this way and then we're going to reinforce this bad boy with some carbon fiber and that way this neck will never move and it'll be strong as strong can be. So we're going to lay out where the truss rod route goes. We'll draw these lines. This ruler is from Grizzly. It's got a super fine edge and I love using it. use it in all my setups and layouts. It was expensive but it was worth it. So this is the truss rod. And then we're gonna lay out where my neck holes are so I can then do my carbon fiber rods. Rods! As my friend would say from Chicago So we're going to run the carbon fiber. So we got this laid out. Carbon fiber. Each side, truss rod, neck heel, neck holes. Looking pretty good here. And as long as I've got my nut side transferred up, I should be pretty good. So we've laid this out, double checked everything. We're going to take this over to that tool I just built. Allow me to route straight lines relatively quickly. So what's great about using this tool is it is really easy to set up. I've got that center line down and I can put my 1 8 bit or my 1 quarter inch bit and just go straight up and down, set up some clamps where I have a stop and just go back and forth slowly. 
And to do this three times for the truss rod and then the carbon fiber rods really took maybe 10 minutes where if I was setting up a fence, this would have taken me, I don't know, probably a half hour, an hour. So just real easy back and forth. Make an adjustment, see how it fits. Use the plunge router because then I can check the height of everything here. And the way I do it is I take the carbon fiber rod, set the depth stop, make sure it's all aligned, and then just go back and forth a couple times, slowly lowering the bit. And it rolls so nice. Everything fits. We're going to cut the carbon fiber rod so it goes in the slot. So one and two. Just got a Japanese sharp saw. Cut it, fit it. Then we're going to take some five minute epoxy and set these in. So we're going to mix the five minute epoxy. We're going to put some tape down so it doesn't go all over the place. I think in the first one I didn't use enough glue. In the second one I may have used a little bit too much. But we'll get a 1 8 old piece of wood and just drip in some of this glue. Make sure it's spread out even. And this will make this rock hard. Carbon fiber with the truss rod, this neck is not going to be going any place. So we've got a little bit of a smaller tool to push in the rod. Tap it down, make sure it's nice and set. A little bit of glue sloppiness, but we'll clean it up with a scraper before we glue on the fretboard. So there's number two, pull up the tape. And as we let this stuff dry, we'll take this up, the fretboard up to my fret saw. Got the Stumic fret blade, and I made a little jig with a pin. And that pin is just above there with the Stumac template. And you just go back and forth and slot this relatively quickly. I've done this by hand a number of times as well, but I've got the number of different jigs for the different scales. I bought these before Stumac put each scale on its own board so I can flip these. I'll just go back and forth, cut this, make sure it's flat so I get a nice straight cut. We'll just keep going. I had to chisel a little bit of this truss rod end out. The piece with the hex is just slightly thicker, so I just cleaned it up with a chisel. This is all set up, ready to glue back on and create my magical sandwich here. I'm just going to run a little bit of tape to cover up the channel and then put some glue on, screw it in, and put in a clamp. So I tape off the truss rod cover so that I don't any, get any glue down in that seam. If I get any glue there, it'll freeze up the truss rod. So just a little bit of glue. I'm gonna scrape off where any of the epoxy sort of leaked out and it's not level. So got that circle shaper. I'm just gonna scrape off, use some tight bond here. Get this spread out and then we're going to clamp it and I've got about 10 clamps clamp this to the edge of my board with a board on top so I get some nice even pressure and then we'll move to drilling the neck holes and the fretboard markers so I've got a six millimeter drill bit and I'm using my template set back up onto the frets and we're just going to go ahead and drill 
each fret marker out. We're going to drill down a little bit less than an eighth, between an eighth and a sixteenth. And then we'll get my tuner pegs, mark them, come back with the brad point bit, and drill these out. I don't remember exactly what size the shallower tuners are, but I got the right size bit in my collection already, and we'll just drill these out. So now I've got that vacuum attachment for the drill press. It makes life so much nicer. All right, so after drilling the headstock here, I want to get this curve right for the cutback. And what I did is I grabbed a bunch of old fender necks and I played with the different contours here. So you see that contour. These feeler gauges are great. Just sort of get this set up. push it down and then what I did is I transferred it to here so I've got a nice line here what I'll do is I'll cut this out now and then take this to my sander and sand this contour so that's how that's gonna look so we'll take this back up to the bandsaw usually the thickness is around a half inch very slightly but we'll cut this off, we'll come back, cut the other side, and then we'll take it to my spindle sander. And I think this is one of the key parts of a guitar because you see it and it needs to look right. So we'll cut the angle here and then take this over to the spindle sander with the right size diameter sanding sleeve. And we'll just go back and forth. You want to make sure that you hold this at a 90 degree angle so that as you're working on it, it looks even on both sides. So if you turn it one way or the other, it's not going to fit. It's going to look like shit. This is sort of one of my pet peeves. If this is not done right, it doesn't look right. Because you'll have it sanded on one side too much or one side too little. This is just one of my pet peeves. So then once we cut this off, I need to find the top of the truss rod and I thought I had cut out enough when I was doing my routing and I didn't so time to get out the chisel and find out where the top of the truss rod is so we'll just chisel this out with a quarter inch chisel and we'll pop it through and then what I found is a file that has a pointy tip in my assortment of drill files and just widen out this hole slightly so you can get your wrench in here to adjust the truss rod. So we'll just widen this out. Looks nice and natural. And this is a little bit rough, but we'll finish it off as we get closer. And you can make the adjustment here. So then I chopped off the end of the fretboard to get to the right number of frets. And then this is my radius jig that everyone asks me a gazillion questions on. Great tool. We're going to do a 12 degree radius board. You can see how the router just sort of passes over on these rails with that custom carve and this is a great tool I really love this tool it's set up nicely so that you cannot go too far on each side you've got aluminum rods uh, aluminum bracket plates to sort of keep everything smooth and so you just go down the line and this roughs out the board I did not cut the board before doing this because I'm going to get a bunch of chip out uh, because this is figured wood so I leave that neck wide I'm going to get a bunch of chip out from this because I've got a figured board 
So I'm going to cut the back side of this with the template that I made for routing the right profile. So 22 frets, we'll cut at the 23rd and leave that overhang. Cut this out and then we'll take this over to my router and route this out. First we're going to trim on my bandsaw, get the right profile shape down. So I made a template with a tele heel and a strat headstock. And we make all the cuts to get this done right. Tape on with double stick tape. And take this to one of my custom routers that I built with a half inch bit sticking out. That way I get the overhang done right and get the profile done correctly. So we're going to do about a quarter inch each time and then we'll just go back and pick up the bit slowly. I put a little bit of tape on the template so I get a little bit thicker of a profile and some of that was coming off. We'll just round this around get it nice and clean. And once that's done we'll take my 12 degree sanding beam and start with 180 grit, sand this down and then come back with a little bit of a higher grit and fine it out. So I'll check in a couple spots to see how level this is. I know I need to spot sand up at the top just slightly. I'll get my grizzly beam precision ground beam and check and see do I have the right level across the whole board and I do. So then it's time to move to the dots and I've got some six millimeter dots from Stu Mac and we're just going to glue these in with some super glue epoxy. There's a special go-to glue that I use if you go on Freddy Fretz's channel, guys, he's got a great way of making end dots uh, with a punch process. I thought that was one of the cooler videos I've seen in a while. Check him out. He's got some great guitar building videos. But we'll just pop in these dots. Make sure they're set right. And then we'll move to drilling the end dots. And I went ahead and I laid out where the end dots should be, used my ruler and a straight edge and made sure I did this even across. I've got a little bit of a bridge that keeps this level. And I've got a brad point bit and I can drill exactly where I need to. Same process as before, a little go-to glue. Got my 1 8 end dots pop these in, glue them in, cut them. And then we'll go ahead and sand these down once they're dry. And we'll sand the top of the board down too. We'll take this to about 320 and we'll be all set to then carve the neck which will be in video two. And we'll finish sanding and get the neck all set up with frets and everything. We're gonna use some stainless steel frets which I haven't used before so Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next vid.